Hey Dunch Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it is time for the 30th edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, the series where I do a recap of the last month or so of albums and EPs with short little mini reviews of all the different projects that I listen to. This will be the last rapid fire review video you see from me this year as I will be doing the December recap in January 2020. I suppose this will also be the last rapid fire review video of the decade which is kind of crazy to think about. For the rest of December, I'm mostly going to be putting my regular album and EP reviews on the back burner to focus on year-end lists and a decade-end thing as well, but this video should hopefully encapture my thoughts for pretty much the rest of 2019 in terms of stuff that I actually want to talk about. Of course, I'm not going to completely count out December because most likely there will be one or two things that I want to talk about in a full video, but pretty much everything else is going to get chalked into rapid fire reviews, so you guys won't be able to hear my thoughts on most of the releases this month until January. But anyway, that's really enough intro talk. Let's just get into the video. I checked out this album upon request from a commenter on my Elon Moore review saying it was really the only album that could compete with Lands of Delight and I do appreciate this album a lot. Um, I think the production is great. I love how I can hear every little detail that's going on, every instrument so clearly that without much distraction. However, that's really as far as my appreciation for this album goes. I don't really see myself revisiting it much in the future. I think if you're really into more psychedelic electronic music acts like Tipper, Bass Nectar, Grizz, maybe Grammatic as well, uh, you'll probably find a lot of enjoyment in this album, but as someone who doesn't really come from that background, I had a hard time, I guess, appreciating this album for much more than just a great production. I found this album to be a surprisingly enjoyable listen. I've been meaning to listen to it for a while and kind of put it on the back burner and never really got into it, but upon actually getting through this project, I'd say this is the first, I guess, album format, a future bass project in kind of Flume's sphere, I guess, that feels like it could really almost be on par with him. I guess it's really the only album that has come close, in my opinion, to Skin in terms of, you know, that style of future bass, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. Although it's not so flume that it becomes unenjoyable because of how similar it is, I think this album does have a level of uniqueness and identity, and I think that's part of what makes it so enjoyable. I'll say I like this EP, though significantly less than Uprising, and maybe that's just just because it, to me it didn't feel like as much of a monumental step forward as that album was. This EP feels like it's following that album just a little bit quickly, and the only track that I felt really, really stood out to me was Break Free, which I would certainly recommend listening to. It's a very um, impactful, melody-driven electro house tune with some dubstep elements, and it just absolutely slaps. There seems to be a lot of hype around Reaper right now, and while I can kind of understand why, I'll say it's just not really for me. This EP kind of captures Reaper's brand of drum and bass, which for me is too dirty to be emotionally impactful and not quite complex enough to be mind-boggling or even interesting as a lot of acts in the neuro scene like Noisia, Frequent, Vorso. I will say I did find the songs that Monster Cat didn't promote, Blackout and Unhinged, to be quite enjoyable, but I, I just feel like overall I'm missing something here. Some of you might remember I wasn't a big fan of Mostly We Grow Part 1, and I think this half of that project is honestly even worse. Given a lot of the songs on the first part were definitely growers for me, and I grew to enjoy more and more with every listen, uh, some of the songs on this half of the EP just feel so boring and uninteresting. The only song that's even grown on me in the slightest is Blink-182, and even then I still don't love it. I didn't listen to either of the singles leading up to this EP, and I honestly didn't expect that much out of it. Figured it was just 
just going to be leftovers, the kind of stuff that Monster Cat didn't want to release as the, the EP seemed kind of out of left field uh, for Pixel Terror to be releasing on Keizo's label. I didn't really see that pairing as something that made sense in my mind because Pixel Terror's sound is pretty drastically different than Keizo's. However, I actually think this EP is quite a good listen. Uh, the content on it is at least for the most part on par with Pixel Terror's other dubstep stuff, and even at some points, maybe even above. If you are a fan of Pixel Terror's style of bro step on songs like Dystopia, Ultima, Maxima, I would definitely recommend listening through this project. This is the first part of a massive double album from Sultan and Shepard. It came completely out of left field for me. I uh, didn't even ever expect these two to really put out a studio album so when we got two i was just like Pfft. and this part of the album is fine it's certainly better than some of the other commercial dance music albums we've gotten this year way better than balance and bright nights uh, but not something that i can really see myself coming back to frequently if at all if i'm being completely honest i can't really remember all that much about the album and i've gone through it a few times uh but i think the only song that really stuck out to me in any way was the tune with tritonal honestly not really that memorable of an ep for me given it's very inoffensive but it also doesn't really do anything all that interesting Interesting, given I feel like a good chunk of Tut Tut Child's discography kind of falls into that category, but I feel like this project is even lesser so than usual. I wouldn't say I dislike it by any stretch, but it's not something I would really recommend to anyone beyond like background music. This EP is pretty insane, not gonna lie. Like, it's not the most out there bass music project they've ever heard or anything like that, but it's just festival banger after festival banger after festival banger. Every single song on this EP, I could just see myself losing it during a DJ set. Every song is just so dirty, so in your face, and so fun. Definitely hope to see more stuff from Quicks in the future like this. I certainly don't think this EP is a bad listen, but I gotta be honest, I hoped for a, a little bit more from Stonebank. If his debut EP was great for being diverse and ambitious, I'd say this project is very much the opposite, which is disappointing considering it's quite a bit longer. Life and Death pushes into album length, yet we don't get much on this EP beyond Stonebank's signature electro bass house kind of infusion sound. Don't particularly dislike much of this project, and I think a few of the tracks, especially like Dark and To The Top, would make a great addition to any bass house DJ set, but beyond that, uh, I really can't say much more about this project. I'll say I definitely appreciate the stylistic changeup for Kai Whiston on this album. Um, I might even enjoy it overall more than his debut. It's certainly a very different project, a lot more organic and natural sounding than his previous work, but I'd like to kind of see those elements meet together head to head on future endeavors because I feel like this is just so far removed from like what made his stuff recognizable to begin with. Then again, at that point, he might just be pushing into Sakuraburst territory, so we'll see. For me, there were definitely a couple really good cuts from this project, but overall, I'd say this album isn't exactly on par with Clams Casino's best productions. There are definitely a couple unique cuts on this EP. I particularly enjoy On My Own quite a bit, kind of flips the whole Psytrance sound on its head a bit, but uh, mostly everything else to me sounds like I'm just listening to a discount Seven Lions EP. While I definitely miss Sean Frank's Future House stuff a lot, I feel like he had such a unique take on that genre that I just loved. Um, I think this EP is a decent direction to move forward in from here. I feel like techno is all the hype right now, and this EP to me has Sean Frank kind of establishing himself in that genre with a somewhat distinguished style. Admittedly, not quite as distinguished as his early Future House stuff was, but nonetheless, I think this project is a really good listen. Deep State is honestly one of the better progressive house albums I've heard in 
a hot minute. Not super crazy about a lot of the vocals across this project, but I think the production is really solid. The instrumentals are very well paced. Even if I feel like this album does overstay its welcome just a little bit, nonetheless, really great listen. While I certainly enjoy seeing collab projects from bass music artists, and I think we could use a lot more of them in the scene, um, I can't really say I'm all that crazy about this EP. I feel like LS Dream's debut Voyager last year was just such a well-needed breath of fresh air, but uh, this EP just follows the same path as his latest album, where it just doesn't seem like anything all that special. Doesn't seem to serve as much beyond a companion to the LS Dream and Schlump tour, uh, kind of giving listeners a taste of what they're going to experience, but yeah, not crazy about this project. You know, I don't deny that Opio's stuff is pretty influential, but I feel like he's at a point in his career where he's just not able to keep up with his contemporaries. I mean, I probably would have gone bonkers over this project had you shown me it in 2012, but I feel like this genre has just made so many strides and pushed forward in significant ways in a way that Opio hasn't been able to quite reach yet. In that way, I feel artists like Culprit, Cone Sound, Vorso, even Grizz have surpassed him at this point. Not really a bad project by any stretch, but come on, Opio, get with the times, man. This album, I'd say, surprised me in a good way. I mean, I'd never really listened to Sebastian's music prior to this project, so I guess I was a bit caught off guard at exactly what I was getting myself into. To me, it's a really thoughtful blend of pop, electro, a little bit of French house, maybe a little rock as well, um, but I can't really say much beyond that. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out for yourself. I mean, even if somebody told me, like, that Sebastian album is my favorite electronic album of the year, I'd be like, Okay, I can respect that. I think I'm at a point now where I've come to realize that the Monophobia orchestral remix was more of a one-time thing and that this guy's music is more intended to be appreciated in a live context. And given that, I'd say the same for this EP. Uh, it's not the type of thing that I, I feel like I can really enjoy just like in my car or in my headphones, but if, if I heard this kind of stuff played at a show, I'd probably be losing it. This is the second half of that double album that I mentioned earlier from Sultan and Shepard, and while I wish I could say that I enjoyed this side a little bit more, I, I really honestly don't. Even though it's a bit more underground, most certainly less commercial than the first side of the album, it was admittedly a lot more of a snooze fest for me. I really, really wanted to love this EP, truly, after such a long-awaited return from tonight night, but I feel like this project isn't even close to being on par with their first EP. I do think there are a couple really interesting ideas here and there, but overall, if I wanted to listen to a more unique project in this vein of trap, uh, I'm honestly just gonna listen to a Troy Boy project. I do like this EP, and I'd say maybe even significantly more than EEPROM's previous attempts, but um, I don't know. A lot of the reasons why I find myself enjoying this project are very similar to the last G. Jones album, The Ineffable Truth, and considering G. Jones is a feature on this EP, um, I, I can't really see that as complete coincidence. It's a decent project, but I'd say most of my enjoyability came out of those similarities and also came about pretty much only on my first listen, so I can't say I'm absolutely loving this EP by any stretch. I feel like this album was marketed to be something very different than it actually is. Sure, David is having a much more heavy hand in writing the music and doing vocals on all the songs again, which I guess is a step up from some of Brief Carolina's recent stuff, but it's not anywhere close to that new meets old BS that Brave Caroline has been teasing in anticipation of this album. It's not anything even close to a return to form. The vocals are completely uninspired. The songs have pretty much the same beat 
every single track. I feel actually kind of ashamed that I was even looking forward to this project to begin with. Uh, it's not anywhere close to Breathe Carolina's best material, and not even close to their best EDM material. While I think there are only three new tracks here compared to the Magic is Real Part 1 EP we got really not all that long ago, I feel like I have a better understanding and a better appreciation of what Dylan Francis is trying to do when I have the full picture. While I'm still not all that crazy about a few of the tracks that were carried over from the EP, I think the new stuff for the most part is really solid. Some of my favorite Dylan Francis work in maybe even years, um, especially Salsa Baton, the collaboration with Nitty Gritty, uh, insane tune. To me, this might even be my favorite Golden Features project thus far. His production game seems to have improved quite a bit. However, I feel like the presets could have added a little bit more flair to this EP than they did. Uh, for the most part, to me, it just felt like top lines, and I feel like it needed a little bit more emotional impact. Not personally my favorite of the Grizz Bangers.zip series thus far, but uh, yeah, I do enjoy this project a fair bit. I don't particularly think there's a big highlight on this EP or anything like that, but maybe that's a good thing. It's definitely a consistent project, and even though I don't love this EP, um, yeah. It was a good listen, nonetheless. First of all, I guess I'd just say I'm glad Slushy has kind of split himself into these two aliases with um, his dream sound going into the Sapient Dream alias because I feel like it didn't really fit any of what he was doing as Slushy. But even then, I, I feel like this might be the closest I'll ever come to loving a Slushy album, just because I feel like there's more emotion and purpose attached to it. This album definitely feels a little bit overbearing, like I could have done without six, seven, maybe even eight tracks on this project. Beyond those though, I'd say this is probably some of Julian's best work. Um, I actually really, really like the tune with Kara. Um, it almost sounds like it should have been a slushy song, but a uh, super unique cut, one that I really enjoy, and certainly the highlight of the album for me. I'm going to put this out there. Rusko is my favorite DJ that I've seen this year, and once again, we're in another situation with him and a Deadbeats release where it just feels like his stuff is not on par with either his foundational tunes or the type of stuff that he's playing you know, in his sets. I didn't even like Mega Rad that much, and I honestly might like this EP even less. In the future, I would love to see an EP from Rusko uh, combining forces with different producers these days who are killing it in the wonky game, like Monks, uh, Subtronics, Chime, Oliver's. That would be super, super cool, and I think that going down that path might be his best path moving forward. Being able to, you know, learn a thing or two from the guys that have, for lack of a better term, surpassed him in terms of production. I was actually really looking forward to this EP. I wasn't big on Poor Surgeon, but I figured, you know, with Mousetrap being one of my favorite labels and then being more on like the techno and house side of things, that this EP might be a bit more of a breath of fresh air to his kind of style, but it didn't really serve as that for me, as the content on this EP felt even more substandard than Poor Surgeon, and I feel like Madoka's got a ton of potential that's just being wasted. Really enjoyed the tune that he did with um, Away not that long ago, but on this EP, to me, he honestly just sounds like a much less compelling Crywolf. Nothing really groundbreaking here. I can't really see the hype when he's putting out projects like this. I've had my problem with Ato's music in the past. I think his music lacks a distinct personality, and sometimes his rather monotonous voice seems to drag down whatever he's trying to say lyrically, but I feel like this project is definitely his best work thus far, given I'd say the reason I mainly enjoy this project is because of Eden's unique approach to hip-hop production and his vocals that come in you know, every once in a while on this project, but I, I do think Ato has improved a lot in those areas that I mentioned before on this, so 
you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more from him. This is a solid EP, I guess. I mean, to me, Divinorum, in the places that it kind of deviated, felt a little bit amateurish for AU5, but I feel like on this EP, it's short, it's sweet, it nods back to his, you know, kind of signature sound, while being able to deviate a little bit and in a more comfortable sense than I felt he did on Divinorum, though I don't feel it's quite matched with his best work, certainly worth a listen. For me, this album falls somewhere between Perspective by Blaster Jacks and Bright Nights by Quintino in that there's a lot of great moments that remind me why Bass Jackers popped off in the first place, why their brand of Big Room was noteworthy, but there's also a lot of really terrible and sometimes downright cringeworthy moments on this project, especially the flight, the collaboration with Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, just no. I can't quite say this is my least favorite Coldplay album. I certainly think it's an improvement in a lot of ways over A Head Full of Dreams. I like how the group tries to be somewhat more socially aware on this album and talk about darker real world themes that they've typically normally strayed away from. However, I feel like those intentions are somewhat lost under a very messy and inconsistent track list. I did buy the album because I consider myself to be a pretty big fan of Coldplay and I collect all their stuff, but uh, I don't really see myself revisiting it nearly as much as most of their other albums. Here's another EP that I think is generally going to work a lot better outside the context of at home listening. Like, there's nothing inherently bad about this music or anything, but I, I just feel like I can't properly enjoy it unless I'm, you know, at an actual IO DJ set. A surprisingly enjoyable LP from Mr. Carmack, I feel like this project ties very nicely into Mr. Carmack's foundational style, um, while bringing some new ideas to the table, which is Pretty refreshing to me uh, considering Rebuild was such like a strange deviation from you know his normal stuff but yeah this album surprised me in a really enjoyable way and I would definitely recommend giving it a spin. I like this EP and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's into hyper energetic melody driven bass music and I really appreciate Troy's use of more interesting jazzy chords throughout all of the songs on this EP, though I will say sometimes those chords can be a little bit overbearing, like did you really have to put that in there at that moment? Can be a bit distracting at times, but most of the time it's fine. Much like Different Water, I found this EP to be a bit substandard compared to a lot of Tennyson's older stuff. Particularly don't think this EP is anywhere near as creative as Like What or Uh Oh, but there are certainly some enjoyable qualities to it might be worth a listen. This guy reached out to me personally with his album, and I think it's honestly worth a mention. This album is giving me some flashbacks to Lone Moon's Amaranth, where when I listen to it, I can hear so much potential in the stylistic blending and the ideas that are going on, but I feel like the sound and the vocalist, the production is still a little bit on the amateur side to hit that potential fully. Nonetheless, this is definitely going to be an artist that I'll follow closely in the future. I am very excited about Systems, quickly becoming one of my favorite artists on the Mousetrap roster. His sound reminds me a lot of the stuff that Deadmau5 was making when I was first getting into his music, but with a more refreshed and modern outlook on it, which is something that I can really get down with. Just some really enjoyable house music. This is a pretty solid, albeit very, very long compilation from UKF. I feel pretty similarly about it to the way that I've felt about UKF's previous yearly compilations where there's a few really great standout songs and a lot of kind of middle of the road stuff. It's not fully representative of the consistent quality they've kept up on their channels throughout the last 10 years, but uh, some solid tunes here nonetheless. Uh, funny enough, I actually think the best tunes on the entire compilation are its opener and its closer, which are Atlas by Camo and Crooked and uh, Moonlight Crime by Nightpunk. Definitely worth skimming through though because I think you'll find some tunes you like here. Yeah, to me, this album honestly feels a little bit rushed, like we just got one earlier this year, um, and now we've already got a follow-up to it, and it, it comes out a little bit because you can hear it 
in the mix downs in a lot of places. They're they're not fantastic and they're especially noticeable on a few tracks here. But um, I think a lot of the ideas are actually a bit more unique. And for that reason, I'd probably put two above one. There are a lot more songs on this album that I'm bound to return to. But at the same time, a lot of songs on this album definitely feel like rehashed ideas from one. So there's not a huge spread between the two albums. If you like one, you're probably going to like the other two. And that right there wraps up the 30th edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, the last episode of the year and of the 2010s. As always, if you want to check out any of the albums or EPs I mentioned in this video, I have all of these Spotify links in order in the description. Would like to take a very quick moment to shout out my sponsor, Audionamics. If you haven't heard of them before, they make audio source separation tools for DJs, producers, other types of audio engineers. I really enjoy their products, and I think if you're in one of those fields, you probably will enjoy their products a lot too. If you click the sponsor link down in the description and you decide to purchase any of their products, I'll get a nifty 10% kickback off of it, so really, it's the best way to support me right now. You know, I don't run ads or anything for you guys, so uh, if you want to support me in that way, uh, it would definitely be massively appreciated. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content like this, make sure to consider hitting the subscribe button, and if you enjoyed the video, leave me a like. Anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>